I went one by one and studied the 50 richest self-made billionaires for months to figure out what factors they have in common and how we can apply these to our lives. This isn't going to be some cookie cutter video where I tell you success is about hard work or reading books. I didn't copy paste from generic articles and I'm not going to waste your time by regurgitating the wishy-washy advice every other YouTuber is already saying. My goal with this video is to give you actionable steps and examples to directly help you earn more money and make it statistically more likely for you to make a name for yourself. The term self-made means we won't be taking into to account those who received their fortunes through an inheritance, after being widowed, or divorcees with absurd levels of price prediction and exit strategies. Here are the common factors that are out of our control. I want to get these out of the way now so we can focus on what we can change for the rest of the video. A. Generational knowledge. A staggering amount of self-made billionaires came from parents who already had a business. Bernard Arnault, the mogul behind Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, and the richest person alive, was born into a family construction business. Francois Pinault, the man behind Caring, which Jones brands like Gucci and Saint Laurent started out in his family's timber business. While these self-made billionaires acquired their fortune from their own businesses, it makes for a tremendous head start to have parents who were already knowledgeable in running a business. And my father was really exceptional. He, gave, he always gave me the sense of business. And when I arrived in the business with him, after three years, he told me, you are able to, to run the business. Observing things like how to compete in a market, how to treat customers, and how to optimize for taxes at a young age allows someone to quickly move through steps that would have held other people back. B. Exceptional competency. This one might sting a little, but some people are simply amazing. Elon Musk developed a video game at the age of 12 and taught himself computer programming at 15. Jeff Bezos took his own crib apart with a screwdriver when he was just 3 years old. Jim Simmons, the most successful mathematician on Wall Street, earned a PhD in mathematics at 23 and at 26 was a code breaker for the US government. As a child, were you good at mathematics? Like, was, was mathematics a natural thing for you? Which yeah, is... it was very natural. And I always liked it. His story is like the movie A Beautiful Mind, but less tragic and mixed with The Wolf of Wall Street. It's said Warren Buffett had an incredible talent for memorizing license plates growing up. Whether it's pattern recognition, math skills, or the ability to learn things quicker than most, some people are just gifted at very specific things. C. Heritage An overwhelming number of self-made billionaires are of Jewish descent. This includes names like Google founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin, Mark Zuckerberg, Michael Bloomberg, Steve Ballmer, Michael Dell, Len Blavatnik, Jeff Yoss, Jim Simmons, and Stefan Schwartzman, among others. I imagine this is because Jewish people have historically been treated as outsiders, which has led to placing a high value on education and making money. If anyone has any personal insight they could offer as to this secret sauce among Jewish parents, I'd love to know in the comments. With that out of the way, here's everything I found by studying the wealthy elite that you can apply in your life. Number one, they're ruthlessly competitive. I am very competitive. So it's like in tennis, I always want to win. No, and that's fun. Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle Corporation and one of the richest people to ever live, is famously associated with the quote, winning is not enough, all others must lose. Being competitive was the number one personality trait I found when researching over 50 of the richest self-made billionaires. To be one of the top earners in the world, you have to be madly driven to compete not just with yourself but with others. It's said that Bernard Arnault visits up to 25 stores every Saturday to study his competition. If you're naturally competitive, find an industry where the odds are in your favor and you'll naturally take care of the rest. If you're not as competitive as you'd like to be, you can hone this trait by setting goals for yourself that are easily scalable, where you can always strive to do better each day and each month. Surround yourself with people that have a heightened sense of competitiveness. Once you've developed a taste for victory and found a game with the odds in your favor, place yourself in a situation with high upside potential. Number two, they started early. Warren Buffett bought his first stock at 11 years old and filed his taxes at 14. Stefan Schwartzman started his first business at 14 years old, having his younger brothers mow lawns while he focused on finding new clients. A common trait among self-made billionaires is starting at a very young age. You've already heard that failure is a part of success, but very few people tell you how it actually plays plays out. We live less than a hundred years on average, so the sooner you can get started with business and personal finance, the more of an edge you'll have in the long term. Number three, they're risk takers. Being risk averse is quite rare among the richest self-made billionaires. They think big, usually having a massive vision in mind for the future, which makes them more comfortable taking on big risks. If you're not a natural risk taker, 
Focus on developing your purpose and skills while competing where the odds are in your favor. This will naturally help you outcompete those directly in your industry. Consistently achieving victory will boost confidence that will naturally lead to becoming more comfortable with taking risks. You can also increase your risk tolerance by saving more money and freeing up your time. It's important to have money to fall back on so you can funnel your time into your future. The earlier you start saving aggressively, the more cushion you have against failure. If you're in school, consider using grant money to fund your idea. A natural part of taking big risks is to endure criticism, rejection, and disappointment from people very close to you. I had the idea uh, of a luxury group, and at the time I was very much criticized for it. The top self-made billionaires understand that failure is a very real possibility, but one big winner is all you need. Once they taste minor success, they aggressively look to scale up and expand further with new products, going into new industries, reaching new customers, and through acquiring companies. Number four, they didn't do it alone. Tesla, Bloomberg, Microsoft, and Google are just a few examples of colossal companies that were co-founded. Michael Bloomberg, Bill Gates, Larry Ellison, and Larry Page believe that sharing ownership was worth it. Some of the wealthiest people in the world got to where they are by teaming up with amazing people. Jim Simmons, the billionaire who created a successful algorithm for trading on Wall Street, didn't hire just anyone. He specifically looked to hire the top mathematicians and specialists to work for him. Simmons specifically wanted Peter Brown and Robert Mercer from IBM. Bill Gates could have found a different CEO for Microsoft, but he specifically wanted Steve Ballmer. Don't believe the lie that if you keep your head down and work hard on your own, everything will fall into your lap. Don't be afraid to share your ideas and the profits with others. Learning about and practicing social engineering can go a long way in building a highly effective team. Get into productive, high efficiency social circles and put your ideas out there. Number five, they had superior education. The most common degrees obtained by the crazy rich are in business, engineering, and disciplines in computer science. Harvard and Stanford were standouts in terms of where the top earners went to university, with Steve Ballmer, Michael Bloomberg, Ken Griffin, Len Blavatnik, and Stefan Schwartzman being Harvard graduates, among others. Phil Knight, the co-founder of Nike, and Jensen Huang, the brilliant man behind NVIDIA, graduated from Stanford University. Universities, especially the more prestigious ones, are breeding grounds for eager individuals with inventive ideas. Many groundbreaking companies and world-shaping friendships began in college, like how Bill Gates met Steve Ballmer in Harvard and how the founders of Google met in Stanford. Universities are flooded with young and ambitious individuals cooking up ideas and collaborating with each other. There's very little to lose and everything to gain when working on venturesome ideas in college. Apply to different schools and figure out what they need from applicants. I applied to my dream school having no idea how I could afford it, but during the interview process, I noticed something that was too much of a coincidence. We were minorities. It then dawned on me that the school had a disproportionate amount of minorities. This meant they were looking for bright students to post on their media about diversity to keep Uncle Sam at bay. It was by applying on a whim, being strategic with the clubs I joined, and presenting my best self that I was able to secure a full-ride scholarship worth almost a quarter million dollars. Number six, they dropped out of school. This one could get me some massive flack, but it's important to say. Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard to found Microsoft. Mark Zuckerberg also dropped out of Harvard to found Facebook. Sergey Brin and Larry Page dropped out of Stanford to create Google together. Some lesser known billionaire dropouts include Michael Dell, Gautam Adani, Li Shaoqi, Li Kaxing, and Zhang Shengshan, among others. Imagine being in a classroom at one of the most expensive and prestigious universities in the world and feeling like your time is being wasted. Imagine you're onto such high level ideas that listening to some of the top professors in the world and working on assignments feels like regression. That's what these soon-to-be billionaires felt during class. I remember in my senior year of undergrad, I found myself doing taxes during class instead of listening. College is proven to raise yearly wages, but if you've proven throughout your life that you outshine your competition and have much higher prospects than a degree, then leaving college behind may be an option to consider. Number seven, they're demanding bosses. It's no secret that Jeff Bezos has been known to have a leadership style that's been described as relentless and confrontational. Larry Ellison has a reputation of being confident and charismatic, as well as tough, highly competitive, and demanding. Zhang Yiming, the guy responsible for TikTok, and Tadashi Yanai, the billionaire behind fast retailing, are also said to have demanding leadership styles, expecting high levels of performance at all times. It makes sense that many of the most successful people in the world know how to squeeze the utmost levels of productivity and efficiency out of their employees. In order to compete at the highest level, a high amount of assertiveness and motivational skills are needed, as well as the ability to track and analyze performance. Number eight, they do things that are odd but intentional. Ken Griffin and Stephen
installed a satellite dish on his Harvard dorm to get stock updates in real time. Warren Buffett chose Columbia University because he wanted to meet the author of his favorite book. Meeting Benjamin Graham, the man who's known as the father of value investing, would change Buffett's life forever. The richest, most inventive people live in a way that pushes them forward to the goal they want to achieve. This manifests by doing things that are sometimes seen as odd or bizarre, but in retrospect can be seen as pivotal to their success. Doing things that are perceived as weird or contrarian requires being capable of withstanding large amounts of criticism and rejection. Number 9. Having a problem with the status quo Stefan Schwartzman founded Blackstone Group after working at Lehman Brothers, where he became dissatisfied with the level of transparency of the stock market at the time. This desire to enhance and outcompete what's typically expected is what led to countless innovations like Google and PayPal. The next time you notice yourself criticizing an aspect of a product or service, see if you can do something about it. Number 10. They speak multiple languages. Why did Mark Zuckerberg take so much time out of his busy life to learn Mandarin Chinese? Learning a new language challenges your brain on top of opening doors that communicate with more people. Jack Ma became obsessed with learning English at the young age of 12. Is it a coincidence that the richest person alive speaks four languages? Bernard Arnault speaks French, English, German, and Italian. Among learning a new language, we can include music and coding too, as they require learning a new structure of communication which can be equally instrumental to improving brain function like alertness and memory. As a child, Larry Page took music composition courses and was sent to a music camp, which his parents have said helped foster his creativity. Larry mentioned that music sparked a sense of pacing in him and the desire to speed up computing. A great and effective way to challenge your mind and keep you sharp around the edges is to pick up a new language, which can include programming or learning an instrument too. After researching the wealthiest self-made billionaires, I'm convinced that the top of the one percenters are the absolute most intentional, efficient, and ruthless people whose main advantage is growing up with access to information that takes years for other people to learn. To recap, the 10 things you should do to emulate the success of the magnates of the world are harness your sense of competition, start as early as possible, get comfortable taking risks, partner up with others, attempt to get into a top tier school, don't waste your time doing things that feel beneath you, ask for what you want out of people, be intentionally weird and learn to endure criticism, turn your criticisms into ideas, and learn a new language. Bonus fact, an absorbent amount of self-made billionaires have been divorced one or more times, with Larry Ellison rocking his fourth marriage and Elon Musk his third. So if you make it onto the Forbes list, after sending me a thank you message, consider getting a prenup.